In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Illumine our hearts, O Master, who lovest mankind with the pure light of thy divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our mind to the understanding of thy gospel teachings. Implant in us also the fear of thy blessed commandments, and trampling down all carnal desires, we may enter upon a spiritual manner of living, both thinking and doing such things as are well-pleasing unto thee. For thou art the illumination of our souls and bodies, O Christ our God, and unto thee we ascribe glory. Together with thine unurgent Father and thine all holy good and life giving spirit now and ever and unto ages of ages. Good evening, everyone. Good to see your faces and thank you for joining us. We'll continue with our Bible study on the book of the Acts of the Apostles. Last week we uh, um, uh, we resumed our classes, uh, gathering after a few weeks of uh, you know some time off, uh, much needed. Um, you know, just to relax a little bit and, uh, um, you know, enjoy the summertime. Uh, so um, last week we did chapter four and we did just the first part of uh, one of the first sections of chapter five because it was kind of related to chapter four. Um, and we learned about um, uh, Ananias and his wife, Sapphira. Ananias and Sapphira, which basically you read about them in chapter 5, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 5, from 1 to 11, from 1 to 11. And we learned um, about the Christianity is now spreading and more people are um, coming to the faith and uh, 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 becoming Christians. And people, what they started to do to make sure that you know, the, the, the apostles had the time uh, to preach and, and teach and all of this, they would actually offer some of their money uh, um, to the apostles, uh, to, the, to the 12 apostles. They would sell lands and, you know, sell, sell some of their stuff in order to give a portion, if not some, all, their, all the, the money uh, to the uh, to the apostles, and then that's how chapter four ends, and then chapter five starts starts with this man Ananias, who him and his wife sold a piece of land, but then when they came, uh, wanted to give a portion to that to the church, they lied to Peter how much money they're donating, or the portion or the percentage of money that they're donating. Uh, uh, and basically claiming that, oh, this is a lot, if not, uh, um, um, if not everything, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not your own control? Uh, why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to man, but to God. So basically he says um, what Ananias did. Uh, imagine you have a piece of land. You sell it for $1,000. But you're, you say, well, I am going to give you 10% uh, um, uh, of that. So uh, um, so uh, like here's, here's uh, 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 $100. But what Ananias did, he said, oh, the land was only for $200, and I'm going to give you half of that. I'm going to give you the 50% of that. Um, he lied how much he, he claimed he's given to God. Again, imagine uh, uh, the land is $1,000. Uh, he only gave 100 but told people that the land was uh, uh, $200. So, uh, so it just shows like, oh, Look, I gave you half of what I, you know, what I've sold it for instead of saying, well, I only gave 10% of it. So Peter tells him, why are you lying in the end? You don't have to lie. It's your money. You should have, you do whatever you want to give the church, give whatever you want. But don't say I'm giving oh, so much of my money. That's all, I'm, you know, don't, you don't have to lie. And then what happened after this, Ananias falls and dies. He dies. And then his wife comes in, um, Sapphira. And Peter asked her the same questions, basically. Uh, he asked Ananias um, how much, you know, the land and all of, uh, you know, and all of this. And she makes the same mistake. She lies and says, oh, of course, you know, we're giving you almost like half, 50 percent or most of the uh, the money that we made from that uh, from that land. And he tells her, well, your husband died. 
you know, because he lied and you're lying, guess what's going to happen to you? You're going to die. And she dies too. And we did talk about this. Like, was God like, you know, just like this uh, non, you know, unmerciful, you know, God who just like wants everything from you, like expecting everybody not to sell everything and give it to the church? No, of course not. But God is saying, you don't have to lie about what you want to give to the church. You don't have to brag and make it a big deal, you know, uh, like go out of um, like you want to give only 10 percent of the land that you sold. Fine. You want to give 90 percent. Fine. You know, but you don't need to uh, to say you know, no. Or you don't need to say, well, I only sold it for 200 and I'm giving you half of everything. That's, you know, and then we talked in a way God did not kill them more they died because realized how much of a mistake they made and because of the the shock that they've re, like god knew their heart and peter was able to detect detect their lie that's how I, they died jeff i see your hand up you know this abuna this reminds me of the old testament um hmm. part where they go into the tent of meeting the two priests or the and they hadn't been purified and they just get vaporized they just just you know where they get burned up because they hadn't purified themselves before they went into the of, of God. Uh -huh. yeah. So, and it's, it's actually a great point because you want to come to the, you know, to the church, you want to come to the church, come in a clean conscious. You don't need to make up, like you don't need to put another uh, 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 face, you know, you don't have to pretend the person that you're not, you don't have to lie. You don't have to show like, well, oh, look, just so you can brag or you can like, look good or anything sure. this is what you can give or this is what you wanted to give thank you very much thank you you know that's it with god just be humble be nice about it be honest about it then you know and that's it that's all you need or else this is the kind of you know punishment in a way you're gonna bring to yourself that you'll die and in a way you might die spiritually you know even if you're physically uh, living, but if you can, if you lie, you know, if you go with this lie, you're going to make another lie, another, you know, uh, and lie another one, another one. And where do you draw the line? So that's uh, uh, basically what we read in the, just the beginning of chapter five. Salim, I see your hand up. Yeah, it's the same as we were saying last time. Did Peter prophesy her death, or did he have the power to to no, we, kill her? We, and we. I, yeah, we did say that he probably prophesied, like God is not going to, we don't, I think when we discussed it, and I I couldn't find much about, I mean, there are interpretations here and there, but not like we have a strict uh, uh, answer on this. Um, at the end, he prophesied that she's going to die. Not like God to punish like this is not, you know, we talked about uh, Judas, the Iscariot that he killed himself in the end. He brought this judgment on him. God did not put, you know, knowing that God for sure knew how he's going to, you know, how Judas is going to finish his life. Um, so most likely he prophesied that she's going to die because now she she knows, um, she, uh, you know, she died like her husband, realizing the shock that they the, their lie was discovered and they couldn't handle that they were caught uh, in their lives. And, you know, probably that's why she died. Steve, I see your hand. Um, forgive me if you've already covered this. No problem. But is lying to the church the same as lying to the Holy Spirit? Lying to the church is this? Yeah, well, when you say the church, like, what do you, what do you mean? Because, because uh, Peter said, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price? So I would mm. assume they would have told the church, yeah, we sold it for this much and we're going to give you this much. But it, it, is that the same lying to the church as lying to the Holy Spirit? I, I would say yes. In the end, we're all one. We're all part, uh, you know, the church, the Holy Spirit, the Trinity. I would say yes. Um, at the end, I think at the end of the day, and honestly, neither neither in Lawrence's in, in Lawrence Farley's book nor the uh, commentaries uh, in the uh, um, uh, the Orthodox Study Bible, uh, nor um, in some other books that I looked at, like exactly tells us like 
I, well, I should have I should have looked at the Saint John Chrysostom. Duh. Uh, but at the end of the day, they died because um, they realized the mistake that they made. They uh, they couldn't handle in a way the shock that they were caught. Also, they were caught in their lie. It wasn't like God kind of like strikes his hand and like just because you didn't give me the full amount or whatever. And that's why um, that's why I, I'm going to kill you. I, I, that's that's what I think. That's you know, um, that's what I think. But lying to the church or lying to uh, to the Holy Spirit at the end of the day, in the end, it's the same. I think. Although Jesus does say in a different place, you know, um, I think um, when he was with. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, with Nicodemus, he says the only thing that it cannot be forgiven is the lying or uh, uh, not. Li well, actually, not lying. Um, uh, um, uh, going against the Holy Spirit, uh, you can go after the Son. Uh, you, you can uh, uh, what is it? Jadif. I forgot the word now in English. Um, blaspheme. Blaspheme. Thank you. You can blaspheme against the, you know, the son, but you cannot blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. But at the end, in the end, you're blaspheming, th you know, to the Trinity, you know, against the tr Trinity, um, and against the Church. But I don't know. I don't know other than this, Steve. I I should look more into it, and like know because um, it is interesting that they just drop that. They just drop that. Just because they didn't, they didn't claim, they didn't say, in in all honesty, what um, you know, how much they're giving, which that could have been could have been a problem at all if they said we're only giving five percent, one percent, zero, one percent of our, you know, gross. I, I didn't want to interrupt Abuna, but you're right. In the study Bible, it states on um, the explanation we lying did. to the church is equal to lying to the Holy Spirit, the spirit okay. of truth. On page 1476, 1476, on the bottom of the explanation. Ananias and Sapphira are accountable for allowing Satan to fill their hearts with lies and for breaking the trust and integrity of the church. That was Deacon. Oh, okay. No, it's fine. <laughs> um, Lying, uh, the sin is not only keeping back possession, but deception. Uh, de deception, lying to the church is equal to lying to the Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth. Um, the spirit, Leviticus 10, the, the profane fire of Nadab and Abidin. Um, uh, Jeffrey shared with us, Leviticus 10, 1, the profane fire of Nadab and Abihu. Then Nadab and Abihu, the sons of Aaron, each took his censer and put fire in it, put incense on it, and offered profane fire before the Lord, which he had not commended them. So fire went out from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. And Moses said to Aaron, this is what the Lord spoke, saying, by those who come near me, I must be regarded as holy, and before all the people, I must be glorified. So Aaron held um, his peace. It just reminds me of that incident, you know, where, where the Holy Spirit's not, it's sort of the continuation of the Old Testament into the New, you know, to setting, making them clear that this is, this is serious, you know. It is serious. This is my, this is who I, who speak, who is speaking on behalf of me now. Um, now that the Son is not in the body on earth, uh, God, the Son, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is working. So you cannot blaspheme against it. At least in the new in the in the New Testament. Um, okay, who would like to read from uh, chapter five, verse twelve uh, to sixteen? This that paragraph and through the hands of the apostles. Anybody would love? Oh, Lawrence. Um, Lawrence, unmute you. You stop the video. So yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Evangelism in the spirit. Yes. And through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the, the people. And they were all 
with one accord in Solomon's porch, yet none of the rest dare join them. But the people es uh, esteemed them highly, and believers were increasingly added to the Lord with multitudes of both men and women, so that they brought the sick out in the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter passing by might fall on some of them. Although uh, also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities into Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits, and they were all healed. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, of course, it continues, especially after all of these uh, signs that they've seen, the miracles, the death of Ananias, uh, and the power of the church, or of this faith that even knows the hearts of people. So that's why they were joining the church uh, in a great multitude, men, women, children, everybody from different places. Uh, uh, and then we'll see later, not only Jews were joining, and then we'll see later that it's going to be uh, one of the conversations between Peter, ben, uh, between Peter uh, uh, and Paul. Uh, if, you know, the Jews can only Jews, should, should only Jews be joining the, the Christian faith or other ones uh, can also, but we'll see. But the point here is saying that everybody, everybody's uh, joining from all the different parts of um, uh, around uh, and no one dared, um, and no one dared, uh, yet none of the rest dared join them, uh, but the people uh, esteemed them highly. No one... لا 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 بس كيف بدي اشوف عميلك ماري وي كان هير يو او سوري ابونا نوت ا بروبلم نوت ا بروبلم اه هذا الدكتور ما عم بعرف اشتغل عليه وي وي او يور الف مبروك ام نو ون كويشند نو ون كويشند ذيم نو سلي يا اوكي اي اي دونت انديرستاند ذس باراجراف يت نان اوف ذا ريست ذير جوين ذيم بت ذا بيبل استيم ذيم هايلي Mm. And it, so it says unbelievers were increasingly added. So, yeah. Mm. So, so Lawrence uh, 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 explains it. However, the apostles enjoyed such esteem, such esteem that none of the rest of the Christians dared to join them in easy familiarity. They knew that God was with the apostles in a powerful way, and they did not presume to question their authority or to trifle with them. All the people of the city magnified the apostles as men of power and did, and did not harass them as they met in the temple courts. Um, they came very seriously, not just like, oh, we're going to join, just it seems like it's a cool, uh, it's a cool faith. They did not want to, uh, um, it, what I understood from dared join, uh, um, yet none of the rest dared join them is more of like, um, not to like dare them of like if they know what they're like if the apostles know what they're talking about or no um no one they did not want to question their authority they did not want to uh, uh question their teachings um and also to go like seriously in this not just like oh i'll just be a member they knew that they have to be whoever wants to join has to be very active uh in that faith not just like oh i just became one of them that's how I understood it. Deacon Nicola, I saw your hand up. Yeah, uh, maybe they were scared on uh, of the authority that they have, uh, that they possess. They'll be saying the wrong thing or doing the wrong thing, so they could be, maybe. you know, eliminated or punished or whatever. Maybe some, you know, but it, it does. Um, uh, Lawrence says none of the rest of the Christians. So it wasn't just um, uh, like people who were not Christians, actually. Christians who just dared uh, did not dare to join them, and um, um, and I think just to they did not want to what it means not to question the authority of the apostles. Um, let's see. I did uh, also. It doesn't say about the. Uh, it doesn't tell you. Yeah, the Orthodox Study Bible doesn't tell you um, why you know. What is exactly uh, by uh, this word um, meant? But yet none of the the rest dared join them. Um, yeah, but the people esteemed them highly. Um, 
maybe, I mean, maybe also if here, then not just like basically like Deacon was saying, if um, some, they just, they saw that this is too much for them. They did not want to join that faith. Uh, although Lawrence in his book says they're Christians who did not want, uh, or uh, the uh, uh, the rest of the Christians uh, dared to join them in easy familiar familiarity, familiarity. Um, that it wasn't just like they just want to join just for the heck of it. Tell me. Maybe some of the early believers were not full believers and they joined, you know, they were kind of not completely committed, but new waves were added by the second sentence. I don't know, maybe the... Uh, maybe, honestly, um, um, maybe I'm, I'm trying to look one more part and see if uh, Acts 6, the worst have continued. Uh, we want five. We want five. And then we want 15, it's actually 513, yet none of the rest have joined them. Uh, there is none of those that didn't. Oh, uh, of the rest, uh, this is one, one interpretation. No one uh, dared to, uh, that is none of those that did not believe, yet the people praised them and the number of the faithful increased. So some people, Praise them, but they just not want to uh, 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 believe. John Chrysostom says on this from 5th century, uh, 407, and as he had mentioned their being in Solomon's porch, that you may not wonder how the multitude allowed this, he tells us that they did not dare even to approach them, for no man, he says, dared join himself unto them. And actually, only two people you know, wrote about this. Uh, um, wrote about this verse. So basically some people, they just, they were afraid um, uh, just to like join in just for the heck of, uh, and thinking, well, they just, they did not just want to join in um, knowing that they're not fully into this faith and did not want any consequences because they, because they saw what happened to Ananias and Sapphira. I think that's what it, um, uh, that's what it says here. Uh, yet none of the rest there joined them. That whoever was uh, coming into that into Christian faith, they're coming like all seriousness. And the ones who were questioning these things, they just did not want. Um, they were they stayed uh, away from it. Although they liked what the people are doing, uh, what the apostles were doing, they just not like they did not want to fully um, uh, integrate themselves in that faith. Any other comments? Thoughts, suggestions. Can we read 17 to 26? I can. As we say in Arabic, فضل. Sure. Uh, the apostles arrested. Then the high priest rose up and all those who were with him which is the sect of the Saddu Sadducees. And they were filled with indignation and laid their hands on the apostles and put them in the common prison. But at night an angel of the Lord opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, go stand in the temple and speak to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught. But the high priest and those with him came and came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the present prison to have them brought. But when the officers came and did not find them in the prison, they returned and reported saying, indeed, we found the prison shut securely and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now, when the high priest, the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they wondered what the outcome would be. So one, so one came and told them, saying, look, the men whom you put in prison are standing in the temple and teaching the people. And one more, 26. Oh, one, oh, okay. Then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence, for they feared the people, lest they should be stoned. Okay, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
So we see again, you know, more people now joining them. That's the second time. Remember the first time they got, well, the first time who got arrested, where they all get, got arrested? If you remember, it was only Peter and John who was they were arrested. But this time, who got arrested? That's basically all of them, right? All of them now. They all they caught all the twelve. Uh, you know, they caught them. All, uh, they caught all of them, all the twelve, and then they, uh, um, you know, and they brought them to the uh, uh, to the high priests to tell them again the same thing. Stop doing what you're doing. You're doing, you know, you're teaching the wrong teachings. You cannot be there, right? Um, but here there's a message that God is giving, uh, uh, especially in the beginning. The message is clear. God is with the apostles. And it, to so to oppose them, okay, uh, is to oppose God, right? And they laid hand upon the apostles and put them in a public jail. But an angel of the Lord during the night, what did he do? Opened the doors of the prison and bringing them out, he said, Go and having stood, speak to the people in the temple, all the words, uh, well, I'm just uh, reading it also uh, from the book, the translation. But what is, what is God, what does God do? He sends an angel to basically, to do what? To, re you know, release them from the uh, uh, prison and tells them what? Not just like, okay, here's, go out and escape. Tells them, I'm going to get you out and I want you to go back exactly to the same place. To, you know, to preach where you were basically arrested. So they got caught. They're told you shouldn't be doing this. They put them in jail. What does God uh, do? The angel, he sends an angel to open up the door and um, gets them, you know, gets them out and not just out to ask them to go back exactly to where they were caught and continue doing the same thing. Um, so there's a, a big lesson that we learned from here from the high priest that they were jealous. Um, they were very jealous of what the apostles were doing, especially that they ca they get all of these people around them. They rile up and they uh, they can uh, gather all these people ar around them. Um, uh, um, it, uh, you know, basically, um, basically that's why they were uh, uh, arrested. Not only just because they were in the in the eyes uh, in the mind of the. Uh, Jews that they're teaching wrong things, but also they are jealous, jealous of able of, of the apostles being able to gather all these people around them. Um, they knew that uh, uh, the people are, you know, they they um, uh, they can obey the, the 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 high priest, the Jewish high priest, out of fear. They would do what you know what the high priest want out of fear or else they know they're going to be shunned and all of this but they were around the apostles these people the same people were around the apostles out of love out of like feeling that they're included that they're loved and that's why um uh, the high priests were getting jealous um uh, it was jealousy uh, of the christians popularity with the people that was behind Jewish opposition to the new faith. And it was this Jewish jealousy that should be blamed for the tumult that accompanied the Christian message, not the Christian uh, 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 message itself. So again, they were jealous, um, and that's why they wanted also to arrest them, not just because they were against them, you know, teaching the wrong teachings, also, they were jealous because the people who just were around the apostles and feeling loved and happy, and that's something they never experienced with their own people. Okay? Uh, and of course, um, they put them in jail. They, you know, the, 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 uh, the angel op opens the doors for them and bring them back. And then when they brought them the next day, hoping to put them in trial and punish them, what did they realize? that the captain, the, the guy in charge of the guards uh, and that uh, um, uh, actually the captain in charge of the temple, um, uh, you know, they were shocked that they see them again in the, um, uh, uh, in the temple uh, teaching, right? Then the, then, then the captain went with the officers and brought them without violence for they feared the people lest they should be stoned. 
right? They did not want to stone them. They didn't want to do anything with them, at least because the fear of uh, um, uh, the people. But that what does that show also? What does that show? Uh, uh, um, uh, the how they look, the high priest, the Jewish high priest. They look in a way humiliated, defeated, right? Because they were, uh, um, you know, here's they're the, the people of authority, and then here's what happened to them, you know, uh, those like few uh, uneducated, you know, uh, bare arm, like I mean, um, they don't have any, you know, these apostles who have nothing, and somehow they defeated them. They defeated the high priest, and somehow in the end, down deep, they know the high priest know that these people have some kind of a power from God, but it, because it doesn't fit their agendas and they're going to feel left out, that's why ke they kept uh, um, uh, uh, fighting them and wanted to arrest them and get rid of them. Um, um, uh, the last time uh, uh, Peter and John stood up uh, in front of the uh, in front of the Sanhedrin, um, Sanhedrin and the high priest, they stood up boldly, right? And they bore uh, they bear witness uh, boldly to Jesus. Uh, doubtless, um, uh, of course, they're going to do the same thing. Now they're brought again to, for investigation. They're going to you know to fight and stand boldly uh, and defend their faith. Any questions about this part? Okay, so yeah, Deacon, yes. Uh, I you know, I agree with the jealousy, but I I believe another pointer is their pride. You know, I know that they are, you know, uh, they losing their grounds, their power. You know, exactly. Exactly. and they have more followers, and they don't want to look weaker in front of the people. They want, you know, because everybody's gonna leave, abandon them, and go and join exactly. that faith exactly. that. Uh, shows that they god never left them even when they, they were in prison he was with them and he broke the chains and that's what he wants to send them out and speak boldly in front of everybody you know being their ambassadors and that's what it's acquired of all of us you know to speak boldly about our faith and confess it and uh, um, uh, be out there be his ambassadors exactly just to exactly. come it is, uh, uh, in the end, uh, jealousy is the fruit of pride um, because, oh, I, I deserve this. I can't have this. Well, I'm better. You know, why this you know, person has this and stuff, you know? So, of course, you're absolutely right. Um, uh, they were jealous, but also be, and because they were prideful, because knowing, like I said, also that, um, uh, that they knew they were losing um, uh, their positions, you know, people now are uh, not following them. They're following this new group, this new thing. Uh, but they know deep down, like I said, that they're, these people come from God, like are supported by God. But they just could not accept that it's just not them. Uh, that now, you know, um, so, yeah, well, that's what's going to happen, you know, more and more during, you know, uh, the course of the Acts of the Apostles more people are going to join uh, the church. Um, okay, we can continue from verse 27 to verse 32. 27 to 32, if anybody would like to read. I can read it. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council and the high priest asked them, saying, did we not strictly command you not to teach in, the, in this name? And look, you have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring the man's blood on us. But Peter and the other apostles answered and said, we ought to obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you murdered by hanging on a tree. Him God has exalted to his right hand to be prince and savior, to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. One more, 32. Oh, and we are his witnesses to these things. And so also is the Holy Spirit, whom mm. God has given to those who obey him. Right. So again, um, they bring them uh, in front of the uh, um, high priest and they tell them, 
Didn't we tell you don't come here? Didn't we tell you to stop doing what you're doing? Didn't we tell you you're going to be punished? You're going to face, you know, bad results. But what is uh, the, of course, who's the spokesperson um, who's going to, you know, who represents all the apostles and the first among them, Peter stood up like he did the first time when he was arrested, him and, and John, and says at the end, no, we don't take orders from you. We take orders from whom? From God. And look what God did tell us, did do for us. He helped us escape from, he opened up the gates, the prison for us to do that. So we, it seems um, basically, well, he's boldly saying, uh, it, well, it, it is necessary to obey God rather than man, uh, right? Um, uh, and, uh, you know, therefore, um, God is with us and not with you, with you as like the Supreme Court, basically, uh, the Jewish Supreme Court. Um, so he's, he's tell, Peter is telling them, well, do whatever you want to do, but we're not going to take orders from you. God is telling us to go and stand. That's what the angel told us. The angel told us to go back to where we were and preach. And that's what we do, regardless what the, uh, the outcome is going to be. Um, but in this, it's not just him now. Uh, just or Peter and John and John, just the two of them, but it's actually all twelve of them uh, together asserting this. But you know, Peter speaking on their behalf. Um, the apostles were all witnesses, as was the Holy Spirit, whom God had given through Christian baptism to those obeying Him uh, by becoming disciples of Jesus. That is the works of the Holy Spirit, um, where the Holy Spirit. Um, uh, witness that Jesus Jesus was the Messiah and Peter continued to tell them about reminding them again that it's the same one that you denied the same one that you killed the same one you you know you crucified he's the one who's helping us to you know to go through all of this and therefore we are his followers and we're going to do what he wants us to do any questions any comments anything on that part the beauty, the beauty of uh, the Acts of the Apostles is like a nice story, but then here and there you're going to get a word or two or a, or a sentence that's like, oh, what is it? What does it mean? We don't, you know. That, uh, that means despite what we go through, if God is with us, no one dares to be against us. So that's, exactly. Uh, exactly. Uh, that's the message, you know. Exactly. exactly. Um. Okay, now, 33 to 40. Actually, 33 to 42. Well, let's, just, let's just finish it. The chapter 5. 32, uh, 33 to 42. Salim, go ahead. You're, you're muted. Salim, you're muted. Yeah, he's trying. Sorry. No Sorry, we said 33, right? A 33 to the end of uh, five. Okay. I feel, when, I think the 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 the, uh, the sentence, you are muted, probably it's the most common sentence in the Zoom world. Uh, uh, every, because you know, we all fall into it. We start <laughs> talking and always somebody saying, you're muted, you're muted. I feel it just... It's one yeah, of the I can't see myself. That's a problem. Usually, I, I, I'm oh, now I see it. Okay. Anyway, um, when they heard this, they were furious and plotted to kill them. Mm -hmm. And one in the council stood up, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, mm -hmm. a teacher of the law held in respect by all the people, and commanded them to put the apostles outside for a little while. And he said to them, Men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do regarding these men. For some time ago, Theudas rose up claiming to be somebody. A number of men, about 400, joined him. He was slain and all who obeyed him were scattered and came to nothing. And this man, Judas of Galilee, rose up in the days of the census and drew away many people after him. He also perished, and all who obeyed him were dispersed. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of men, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot overthrow it. 
lest you even be found to fight against God. And they agreed with him. And when they had called for the apostles and beat them, beaten them, they commanded that they should not speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. So they departed from the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted counted worthy to suffer shame for his name. Mm. And daily in the temple and every house, they did not cease teaching and preaching Jesus as the Christ. Thank you, Salim. Thank you. So what we know, what do we notice? What is the like a key? Um, uh, um, um, what's the most important thing in this paragraph that we read, Salim read? That there is, you know, they wanted. They were so furious that the apostles were not going to listen to them, and they just wanted to, you know, they wanted to uh, kill them. But of course, they were fearing also the people, right? Because now a lot of people are, uh, uh, and they were very disturbed. What do they want? To, what can they do? What can they do? So, like, they need to get rid of these this big threat to them. And then there is this guy who is a very high, well-respected uh, Jewish high priest. Told them, uh, uh, which actually his name is what Gamaliel, right? Gamaliel. Um, I don't know what it means. I don't know if there's like a, a Gamaliel or meaning. If, uh, I think that's the first version of Jamal. <laughs> oh, uh, you know, Jamal is beauty, we know. His name means in Hebrew, the Lord is my reward. The Lord is my reward. But it says here in the notes, Gamaliel was a famous rabbi under whom Paul studied. So it looks like he was his uh, teacher. It, uh, uh, don't forget now, yes, but don't forget Paul is not yet, uh, uh, the, Paul is not in the picture yet. It's, Paul hasn't yet, Paul is still Saul, and he's still going around ch ch chopping off heads of Christians. And, you know, and we'll see in the next chapter, when, 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 you know, or later on, a couple of chapters, what he's going to do, uh, who's going to oversee the killing of, of uh, uh, the first deacon, uh, the first deacon, Stephen. But now he's high, uh, high, well, high respected high priest, uh, uh, Jewish high priest. Um, okay. And he tells them, okay, why are you like so eager to kill them from now or punish them from now? This guy, Jesus Christ, that they're following now is not the first one who claimed that he's the Messiah. And according to the Jewish uh, history, many, many people claim that. Many people claim that title. And they all somehow vanished, died. Like, and also, no one preached it, preached about you know, preached the uh, you know the Messiah like the way Jesus did. No one died for their sin, you know. I mean, for the sins of the world. Um, uh, all these other messiahs, they thought that they're going to be, they are the Messiah, or they claim to be the Messiah, but they fought all with with the sword. They thought like, oh. It got to their head that they're the Messiah, and they wanted to fight uh, um, uh, the Romans and stuff. But the Jews refused to acknowledge them. The high priest acknowledged them as the Messiah. So there were other people, and uh, um, Gabriel uh, mentions a couple of them to say, like, oh, look, other people came out and had followers and said that they're the Messiah and all of this. But eh, they just, with the time, they died. They vanished. Their, you know, their followers stopped. You know, to, you know, they didn't have followers to stop. So, like, just give it some time, and most likely this group, the same thing, they will just disperse. And if they don't, then we know it's then something from God, right? But this, this is when um, uh, I'm just looking for the verse, men of Israel, take heed to them for some time ago. Uh, after this, Judas, he also perished and all over. And now I say to you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this work is of man, it will come to nothing. But if it is of God, you cannot what overthrow it, uh, overthrow it, lest you even be found to find against God. Right. So he's the guy is very practical. He's like, what are you going to do if it's from God? If this is the God, you know, if somebody, I mean, somehow they were imprisoned and somehow they came back to the temple. Some power got them back. So that means 
there is something you know about them that uh, that is true or it's from God. But if they're not, they're going to disappear anyway. But the church tells us that uh, Gamaliel became a saint. Um, that he is actually his feast is on August second. Uh, Saint Gamaliel, the the God God is my reward. Uh, it says after the tradition tells us do we have. Um, I looked it up. We have accounts from uh, bishops uh, later on in the sixth century and seventh century and eighth century, talking about him and talking about how he converted to Christianity and got baptized by either Peter or John, um, Peter or John, uh, and uh, his his feast is celebrated every year on August second. He is included with the saints. Um, uh, so maybe one of the reasons he said what he said because he started you know when he saw the faith of the apostles and what they're doing and this new you know group of people he kind of started like it seems you know natural for you know for him to join them and uh, but he played it very smart he didn't say well i think you know because i believe they're right you know we should not punish them or this he just played it much smarter and saying well why you want to bother with them for now? Just give them some time. If they're if they're bad, like the other people, you know, who claim that they're the Messiah, they will disappear. They will be gone. You know, but if they're from God, well, we better be careful then, or we better embrace them because we cannot be, you know, on on the other side, you know, against God. Okay. Comments, questions, complaints. Jeff, go ahead. Yes. I, um, thank you. I heard someone say recently that of all the major religions, <clears throat> Christianity is the only one that was <clears throat> opposed by the government for hundreds of years and still had, whereas all the other major religions were promoted by the governments at that time. Mm. And, you know, until Constantine, I guess, converted whenever that was. 25, 320. Uh, yeah, 320. Uh, you know, Right, the Jews and the Romans oppose Christianity, and still it spread. Yes, yes, it's always the, uh, the. I saw a meme one time, and I used it at the church once. It says, uh, "Look at these uneducated twelve men who had nothing, no power, nothing, and look what they've done to the whole world. They brought Christianity to the whole world, and all those powerful politicians in the White House during the uh, Nixon's uh, scandal that they could not hide it, and like they couldn't hide their, uh, uh, um, uh, you know, the the scandal. So, look, I mean, they fell." fell apart right away and he was caught in you know in his crime and all of this so of course this is something from god uh you know where where everyone was against them everything was against them and those like 12 uneducated uh not wealthy not known people look what they've done and they brought christianity you know and look how much of the faith um how you know the faith is still uh you know going and uh christianity is still here because of their faith so it has to be something right it has to be something that it's good and right. But um, uh, yes, Christianity up to the 320, up to actually uh, Constantine just allowed it. He did not make it till later. It became the, the soul with, with uh, if I'm not mistaken, Justinian in the 6th century um, or 5th century that it became the, the official religion of the empire the byzantine empire with constantine the great he just allowed it you know it's it's now legal the christian faith is legal uh but not till i think a couple hundred years later till it became the uh, um the official religion of the empire okay any questions about you know, Islam right away, they took, you know, and how did they spread on in the end? Like, look at Islam. And even some of the Jewish, you know, in the beginning also, the Jewish, like they, they left from slave, you know, they escaped from slavery, but they wanted to establish, you know, uh, a kingdom and, you know, and that's why, you know, they, they were, they were ruling, you know, it was slaves and everything right when, you know, after they, they, um, they crossed the river, um, or they crossed the Red Sea. Um, but Christianity never did this. I mean, yes, later, 
and this is just on the side. Uh, I mean, a lot of people talk about the uh, uh, um, the crusaders, the the crusaders, right? And, and some people, like some Orthodox theologians and uh, a lot of Christians, they they go against these. Like this is just not Christian. Uh, it's just a very unChristian way of like to start wars um just in uh, at the end like i mean to stop wars and killing and all of this in the name of jesus the, the one who you know allowed himself to be killed so a lot of people might you know are never or they never justified the um uh, or under uh, they never justified or accepted the idea of those religious wars that we're going there to defend christianity or to reclaim those lands and stuff um and I mean, it's a hot topic, uh, you know, it's just, uh, what do you do then? We just like go get all ourselves killed or something. But anyway, um, Christianity at the end of the day, um, it's um, definitely in the beginning, which against a, a, any other religion, like Jeff said, spread through love, spread through humility and, and a lot with, through persecution, actually, that's the, that's the right way. Spread more when you know persecution was taking place than when the the church was kind of like fine like no one you know no one can bother them and accept the government uh, actually under persecution the church flourish more than any other times you know yeah. through the whole entire history you know yeah. the more we get persecuted the more people will start seeking the women, and not only this more people will get uh, a closer to their faith and they become more faithful look at russia russia for a hundred years under the communism i mean they tell you the those beautiful stories how people were still um uh, trying to find any way and uh kept you know all these came up with multiple ways and stuff to still pray to be able to you know preserve their icons and then when uh, when uh, communism fell, it didn't take much for churches to go back and stuff because it wasn't like people already underground were working um, and keep praying and all of this. But it's not like we want to call on it. Like, yes, please, God, bring wrath on us or, you know, let's people come and kill us. So, I mean, not like that either. But that's the one thing Christianity is the opposite of all Christians. Like it flourish, it flourishes in in persecution um let's continue with six and see how much we can do from six okay can somebody read six one to six i read it hey thank you Roxanne. Six, six, six from from yeah. one to six one six six one six okay god okay deacons ordained mm -hmm. now in those days when the number of the disciples was multiplying, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellen Hellenists mm -hmm. because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Mm -hmm. And the twelve summoned the multitude of the disciples and said, it is not desirable that we should leave the world, the word of God and serve tables. Therefore, brethren, seek out them among you seven men of good reputation, full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom, whom we may appoint over this business. But we will give ourselves continually to prayer and the ministry of the word. And the saying pleased the whole multitude, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, a proselyte from Antioch, whom mm -hmm. they set before the apostles. And when they had prayed, they laid hands on them. Mm -hmm. Then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests were obedient to the faith. Mm -hmm. So what did we see here? The birth of what? Church. A birth of which, uh, what rank? Deacons. 
Deacons. Deacons. Deacons. Yeah. Deacons. Right. So, what does deacon means? The word deacon. Do you guys know? The word deacon from Greek, diakonos, from diakonia, which means service. So deacon literally means uh, server. That's why in Arabic, in Arabic, literally their name is khadim. Literally. Khadim. What about shemes? Yeah. Shemes is the Syriac word for khadim. Oh. Shemes. The word shemes is the Syriac word for khadim. That's why, um, uh, um, you know, in the great litany, we'll say for our father in Metropolitan Joseph, من أجل أبينا ورئيسي كهنتنا Joseph والكهن المكرمين. بس شو بنقول بعدين والشمامي. وخدام المسيح. Exactly, خدام المسيح. Shamamisa uh, uh, no, Masih, but actually Shamamisa was added. The original, you know, when the first translated into Arabic, oh, the, the, the Metropolitan, the priest, and the servers of Christ. Khuddam al Masih. And then we added before it Shamamisa Khuddam al Masih. Somehow at, at one point the word Shamas became the um, a popular or the common word to refer to the deacon um, uh, in Arabic, but it's a, it's a Syriac word that means khadim. Okay? And why this this uh, uh, office had to be uh, had to uh, had to uh, to be created? What was the problem as we read? The disciples, the, the apostles were doing two things, two major things. They were preaching and teaching, right? Teaching the word, the, the word, and all of this about Christ. But also, they were in charge of going to the houses and helping the needy, helping the orphans, helping the you know um, uh, the widows, uh, poor families, and all of this. And it happened. I mean, when you read this uh, this paragraph, it's like, oh yeah, it happens now. You know, people complain, well, father did this for me, or did this for this family, but he didn't come, you know, to, to my, fa you know, to my house, or, you know, he didn't do this for me, well, oh, he's delayed doing this, and he only, you know, why these people and not, you know, and it, that's basically what the complaint was about, uh, because, um, uh, what did it say? Um, there arose a complaint against the Hebrews by the Hellenists. Because their widows were neglected in the daily distribution. Then the 12 summoned. You. So in a way, um, you know, uh, uh, in a way, they were, um, some people felt that they were neglected. Like, and because the, 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 the apostles, the, 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 especially the 12, they were just like thousands of people are coming to the faith. And every time, and they could not just ignore the teaching. They could not just focus only on like going around and handing the food and all of this. They, they couldn't do that. They couldn't just, you know, spend most of their time on this. So they had to balance that. And to balance that and make sure that they still teach, because that's the important thing first, they had to create that office. And then they came out like, well, let's create the office of the diaconate, the office of service. And that's why we see even, actually, I have a, I was telling before we went uh, uh, before we started recording. Um, uh, I was talking, uh, saying that I have a deacon. I'm giving a talk about the office of the diaconate um, uh, on September uh, 16, 17 in York, Pennsylvania, about the diaconate um, uh, office. Um, and we see that's how that we see this is where it started, and it started just so they can serve. Uh, uh, they serve the food. They serve. They bring the essentials basically to the families. Not like today, they're just doing the petitions and all of this. The that's why they were called deacons. They were called uh, servers. Uh, Salim, please unmute and ask your question. Yeah, but it's. Yeah, I find it interesting that it's a complaint against the Hebrews. Mm. by the Hellenists, meaning mm. probably the first Hebrew converse versus 
um, non non Jews. So me. It, it took it took a, you know a uh, you know a sectarian angle, but they solved it by saying we, we we're going to put the deacons because it could have taken that angle. It, it could have Maybe. definitely been. Exactly, exactly. And they were complaints like, oh, you're serving these people, but how about us? You know, oh, because we are not good enough. Oh, we're not yet, you know, we're because we come from a different, we're not Jews. We were not Jews. Are we second class? And this is what the apostles did not want to hear or did not want to deal with this because in the end, they didn't mean to. I mean, if it happens like that, they definitely didn't mean to. And that's why they're like, we need to put an end to this by doing what? by creating that office of service, literally. Deacon, from word Greek word that it's called diakonia, diakonia, which means uh, service. Chidma. Um, okay, and then out of the sal why seven, not eight, not 10? Like 12, why not 13, why not 14, you know, apostles? Seven, it's a full number also, you know, according to the Jewish tradition. Um, maybe you know that's why they um, uh, uh, they chose seven of them that they were they said seven that they were well known of good reputation right full of the Holy Spirit and wisdom whom we may uh, you know appoint over this business but we will give ourselves continually to prayer and to ministry of the word then the apostles will do what solely just preach just talk just teach the word of God so they chose. Um, they chose the seven people that we, um, you know, uh, that we heard their names, and then the word of God spread, and the number of the disciples multiplied later, greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests, um, many of the priests were obedient um, to the faith. Right? Uh, we note in this whole event uh, the corporate and conciliar nature of the church. The twelve did not decide on a course of action by themselves and simply impose it on the church like despots. They called the what? The multitude of the disciples, right? Now, when the number of the disciples were multiplying, there arose a complaint. Then the 12 summoned the multitude of the disciples and said. That's also an interesting point that Lawrence um, uh, Farley brings in his book. Like they, they did not just like the 12 on their own made the decision, told people like, okay, this is what we decided. This is what we're going to go with. They actually brought everybody to listen to them, listen to their complaints, whatever they, you know, they talk, you know, um, to talk about, you know, uh, about this issue. And that's why in the church now, whenever, especially the first seven ecumenical councils, they were bishops and priests from all over the world. It wasn't just like the patriarchs. It was just like few people that decided for the whole world, for the whole church. It's so actually everybody came to, you know, to, to discuss those major issues and to find um, to find an answer uh, to them. Okay, let's uh, do the last uh, paragraph. Can we do seven to thirteen, please? Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, seven to um, actually eight to fifteen. Jeff, uh, would you like to read it? Because last time you had your hands up. Um, I don't have the right translation. Fine. So I, I think maybe better someone else. I mean, it's not a problem, but that's... Oh, Majid. Evangel evangelism of the deacons. And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and signs among the people. Then there was some of what was called the synagogue of the freedoms, Cyprus, Alexandrians, and those from Sicilica and Asia, disputing with Stephen. And they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. Then they secretly induced men to say, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. Mm -hmm. Stirred up the people and the elder, the elders and the scribes, and they came upon him, seized him, and brought him to the council. They also set up false witnesses who said, "This man does not cease to speak blasphemous words against the holy place and the law." 
for we have heard, for we have heard him say that this Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place and change the customs which Moses delivered to us. Hmm. And all who sat in the council looking steadfastly at him saw his face as the face of an angel. Hmm. So we we learn now about uh, um, um, at the end of six that what happened that he's going to be arrested um, and well he's going to be uh, killed basically. Uh, but Stephen, who was his main job was what taking care of right serving the people, serving the widows, uh, serving the the uh, orphans, serving the needy and all of this. But of course, while he's doing this or in his free time, what is he doing? He's preaching to, he's talking, he's spreading the word. And it came to be that he had a conversation, he had a debate with some Jewish people. Um, and then uh, um, they did not like that, that they were humiliated, they were defeated. And they did not like that. So what did they do? They got him to be arrested. Um, but it says, how it, um, uh, um, verse 15, and all who sat in the council looking steadfastly at him, saw his face as the face of what? An of an angel, right? Um, uh, all those in the council staring at him in their midst uh, saw that his face was like the face of an angel. That is, his eyes were burning with, the in, with an inner radiance and joy, a kind of ferocious serenity. The grace of martyrdom was upon him, and he already belonged to the kingdom, um, uh, Farley writes. Basically, he's like, I know God is with me. I don't care what the outcome of, the, of that counsel against me is going to bring. If anything, I'm going to meet my Lord. Um, and that's how he will see later um, that he became, he's referred to as what? What is his title? He's the, he's the first deacon, but also the first what? Martyr. 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 martyr yes the first the proto martyr we use the word i mean first martyr or proto proto is just first in greek do we know when we celebrate his feast since december 27th so, so december 27th two days after christmas is the celebration of saint uh saint um Stephen, and we'll know, we'll see after in chapter seven you know who oversee who who oversaw his killing Oh, Saul, Paul. Saul, who became later Paul. Paul. Saul, we'll see that Paul, before he became Paul and had the conversion, his name was Shaul, Saul, and he was going around making sure like those Christians do not live. They're spreading the wrong. That's why he was very highly educated. He was very highly educated. And... Um, and you know, but he his goal was to eradicate. Is that a good word? Like, uh, is that right? Is eradicate basically? Um, Persecute. Uh, no, like uh, uh, kill and like uh, erase, basically. Wipe off. Uh, wipe off. Yes. Um, wipe off Christianity, and that's why he made sure. Since it's a sword, it. is chop off. <laughs> no, <sorry>. Yeah, <laughs> a chop off too. <laughs> that's what um, that's uh, and then after this we'll hear about his conversion what happened to him and and he, how he came how he went from Saul to Paul any other questions those there were five you know chapter five and six Abun I have a question about um, so at the very end of this they talk about um, you know that when Jesus talked about the temple being raised and three day you know destroyed and then hmm. you know, and we know i mean i think we know well what i mean what the temple after jesus died and was resurrected the temple is the holy spirit really right isn't isn't i mean it, it, there's something replaces the temple after jesus's resurrection right and for us hmm. for us we became like what he means is like we are the temple of god now we are okay yeah we are uh, that's why we say the best, you know, the best place for God to reside is not just the church. Yes, we need the building, but it's more importantly, he has to reside in us. We need to be the perfect temple for him. 
Um, and of course, they also, um, um, you know, with Stephen, um, we have heard him speak blasphemous words against Moses and God. And that is, they secretly arranged for men to bring this charge against him for blasphemy uh, was a capital offense, right? Um, and of course, like, uh, he did actually, didn't he... Does it say what they were arguing about? They therefore arrange a formal debate. We were not strong enough to withstand, and we're vested in the. I just want to see if they talk about, um, and they were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit. And they stood up the people, the elders, and scribe, and they came upon us and brought him to the council. Yeah, doesn't say exactly, but other than it was um, a debate. Um, but most likely he did talk about the temple too. That this is not a, uh, um, that's not the real temple that we're looking like we need to have. It's more, you know, for us to be the temples, uh, the right temple for God. Temple uh, that is not built with hands. Not, that is not built with hands, but like God, what create what God created and with His own hands. Father, yes. I have a question. Naam ayu al khadim. Tislam, honored to be khadim. Uh, the we keep mentioning the twelve after Judas committed suicide, and yeah. they appoint, appointed another one to. Oh, yes. Do you know the time frame when they appointed them? Is it before Pentecost? After Pentecost? Is it anything with the to be done, or is it uh, by Jesus? You know, I'm just <laughs> curious. It, it, it's, I'll tell you in one second. Do we spend many days? Um, I give me one. Matthias. Give me yeah, Matthias. Uh, for days were in preparation, then they returned to Jerusalem. Um, those they produced the devil makes you disciple. Name is one hundred. Now we're just a few verse in the middle. Come on, where is it? Um, I am pretty sure it's before Pentecost. They they um, um, they elected him, um, and then they had Pentecost. Yes, it's actually the day before Pentecost. Look at chapter one. Um, uh, therefore, of these men who have accompanied us all the time that the Lord Jesus went in and among us, beginning to da 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 da. He was taken up from, and they proposed to Joseph called Barsabbas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, you, O Lord, who know, da, da, da. and then the next day, Pentecost took place. So on the 49th day um, after uh, the resurrection, um, uh, they chose the one to replace Judas. And then the following day, the 50th day, uh, Pentecost took place. Actually, so he, was it election? I mean, they elected them? Cast, they were literally, um, um, you know, two names wrapped in a piece of, you know, on a piece of paper, and they literally chose one of the two names. Uh -huh. uh, casting lots. We did say uh, back then, casting lots was something very common whenever there's like, what can we do? Um, I, I, I also remember I did tell you the story about uh, Jonah, Yunin, uh, in, the, in the sea. God tells him, you need to go to Nineveh. You need to go to Nineveh to tell the people like, to repent, and I want you to do this. And he was like, I don't, I don't, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And then he's like, okay, he's like, I'm not going to go. So what he does, he goes on, an, on, a, uh, um, uh, on a ship going somewhere else. And then this ship in the middle of their trip, like all kinds of bad weather uh, happens. And they were like, there's like, it's not the season for any bad weather. Like, why is this happening? So they were like, hmm, we need that. This is definitely, there's a message here. God is telling us. So to know who's the problem, we need to cast lots. So they cast lots among all of the, you know, put the names of all of them who are on the, on the boat, on the ship. And then guess whose names were you know, was chosen or came up. Jonah, they're like, you are the problem. And then what happened? They throw him from the ship, from the boat. 
they throw him in the ocean. And the second they throw him in the ocean, what happened? The whale ate him. Yeah, but, yeah, but the, the stone comes. The stone, the stone comes. Yeah. The book of, you know, we learn from the book of, uh, you know, John. Did there uh, have to be 12? Did it have to be 12 apostles? 12, that was the number that, you know, in the end, we believe they were 12 apostles to represent the 12 uh, um, uh, tribes, of Israel. tribes of Israel. Exactly. But there were multiple people there, you know, multiple people uh, watch, uh, you know, uh, uh, following Christ. Um, not even women were following Christ. Mary Magdalene, uh, Mary, the mother of James, uh, Mary Salome, like multiple women also, and other men. The blind man who got who Jesus uh, healed followed him. So there were many followers, not just the twelve disciples, but there's this the twelve apostles. But there's this focus on those twelve to represent the twelve tribes of Israel and how they, in the end, failed to do what they're supposed to do. And oh, it is to represent the twelve tribes of Israel. Exactly. And no, look. They were supposed to be 12 tribes of Israel that basically live the faith and do all of, you know, do the good things. But then they started fighting among each other and fighting with others. And basically they failed. So here's saying, they're saying, Jesus is saying now, well, here are the 12 men who are not kings, who are not like, you know, with much of authority and power. But look how they're going to work all together and actually do what's what they're supposed to do. Yeah, like if you're, you know, oh, by the way, Walid, Jamel was your, uh, you know, took your job last week. He's no, like, hella, isha, hella, shayf, isha, for some reason, it just showed up. It's about timing, Jamal. It's about timing. <laughs> it's about timing. <laughs> um, we can, you know, we can uh, finish the recording, uh, stop the recording, and then we can uh, speak, you know, if you have any questions. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, one God, amen. We thank you, O Lord, for all the blessings that you bestowed upon us. We ask you to keep our families and our friends uh, healthy and safe. For thou art holy now and ever and unto each of ages. Amen.